All right, can we get those yeah. lights? Uh, yes. All right, guys. Uh, so we have lengthy announcements and a lengthy mission. We're actually going to get started just a little bit early today. First, uh, for anyone who might be unaware, at uh, PR Committee, we have a PR point system where you can earn points for doing things like showing up to meetings, hanging posters, uh, or designing posters. And at the end of each semester, uh, we like to tally up all the points that everyone has collected and award them with prizes corresponding to the number that they have. Yay! Uh, so would you like to explain more, dearest Captain? I would love to. Uh, in a minute. Hopefully I'll answer some of your questions. Um, we have three tiers of prizes because some people gain a lot of PR points. Um, the basic prizes are like fun dollar store stuff that if you gain 60 PR points, you are eligible for that. If you gain 120 PR points, you are eligible for a medium tier PR prize. Uh, that would be something a little more substantial, like uh, one of our super cool keychains. Um, uh, if you gain 200 or more PR points, uh, that makes you eligible for one of our bigger PR prizes that involves uh, like a star t-shirt or um, a ticket to a special event. Um, we also have a special PR prize thing where if you are in the middle tier and you want to enter for a drawing to get a bigger prize, you may do that, but that isn't a guarantee. So it's like, whoa, fun. Um, but this year, hi. Hello, Ava. Uh, also, these points can roll over into next semester. So if you are at a uh, at the basic tier and you want to save up for something bigger, uh, you may do that. But you cannot do that if you spend them all right now, which you're still welcome to do. Um, the people who are eligible for a PR prize who are here um, for basic level, Alex Froyo, uh, the PR prizes are over there. You may look at them. Would you like to keep yours? Cool. Um, John, we can talk to him after if he wants to pick one. He may. Uh, and Logan, we contacted on Slack. Uh, I'm not interested in medium tier because I'm going to go for high tier. And we have one person who is eligible for high tier, and that is Zachary Yarrow with a heck ton of points. And when he gets here, we will ask him if he would like to claim this semester's high tier prize, which is a ticket to uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. We will ask him when he gets here. I believe so too, but I'd rather ask him to be sure. So once again, if you want to get in on this fantastic PR rewards program, you can come to our PR committee meetings, which are Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Um, this semester, they are um, just across the hall there. Uh, we, will, we may or may not reschedule them next semester, so be on the lookout for that. But there is still one more meeting uh, that you all can attend and uh, earn a couple of points, even just for showing up, get a head start on next semester. Um, Speaking of final week of classes, uh, we are holding a special mission next week. It is a little bit abnormal. It's in the same room at the same time, uh, but as opposed to a presentation and uh, a discussion on sorts of things, we're just having our December social night that night. Uh, so we're going to have uh, games for you guys. We're going to have board games courtesy of RY. Uh, I'm going to be running my uh, Star Wars tabletop RPG once again, uh, so you can message me on Slack if you're interested in hopping yes. on that. Um, and we're going to have uh, Hot drinks there, I don't know if, I don't remember if I mentioned that. And we're also gonna be screening Star Wars Forces of Destiny. Those are just like short little couple minute Star Wars cartoons. They're, they're pretty cute, they're fun. Um, speaking of Star Wars, we're on Friday, December 15th, we are going to see The Last Jedi. Uh, we are not uh, pre-purchasing tickets for you guys, so you can pick those up online yourselves or at the actual physical theater. Uh, but we are going to 7 p.m. showing and we're meeting outside Nathan's for the carpool at 5.30. Carpool is still free, yes. Can you guarantee that they're not sold out, sold out at that moment? Um, I, I, I have no idea if they are. I or honestly not. don't know. I would, from past experience, I would assume they are not yet sold out, but I cannot guarantee that. So, yeah, definitely pick those up at your earliest <laughs> convenience. Um, Hearts Like Fists is happening this Friday at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday at noon and 7.30 p.m. So that is the latest show by players, right? RIT, that is RIT Players' uh, big show this semester. So um, Ava is actually in the show, so you should definitely come and uh, enjoy it. It's free for students, and uh, as a uh, superhero show, it ties into our aesthetic of Starfest 2018. 
Speaking of Starfest 2018, <laughs> oh boy, these segues are unparalleled. Um, attendee registration has opened today, so you can actually get your tickets. Um, members, if you want to buy them like here, you can speak to Tilio and you can get your discounted price for them. Um, otherwise, if you want to pay online, uh, you pay the regular $10 price. But member special um, in-room purchase is $8. You can pay via cash, credit, or Tiger Bucks. So, uh, and this will extend until like actual at the door uh, prices. So if you you know don't have any money this week, uh, you can bring them to uh, our social night next week. Pick up your tickets then, or online at any point. But again, online you don't get the member discount. Only in this room do you get the member discount. Uh, let's see. Finally, uh, at the end of each semester, uh, we award ranks to any of the members that have ranked up uh, due to uh, the various ways that you have to do that amongst our club. So for anyone who is unaware, uh, every member has a rank in coordination with you know the general Starfleet sorts of ranks. You can get things for you can get ranks for longevity, running missions, volunteers, special service, those sorts of things. And we actually have a couple of ranks that we would like to award now. Yep. Um, this semester, we would like to. Award um, Logan King, who is not here right now, but uh, someone Slack message him because he is going from Lieutenant Junior grade to Lieutenant mission this semester. He ran the Stranger Things mission. <laughs> and we would also like to congratulate Tulio Dracy for going from Lieutenant to Lieutenant Commander for running his first mission this semester, which was the first mission of the semester. <laughs> Congratulations. We have any, uh, another form of ranks that we do at STAR is uh, special ranks. So through the ranks that are uh, clearly laid out with how you earn them, like running a mission and things like that, um, you can get up to lieutenant commander without being elected captain, in which case you go straight to captain. Um, but you can get up to lieutenant commander, but it is possible to make those last two jumps to earn a captain rank. Um, those are done through special ranks, and, and special ranks are awarded for service. Service is the word I was looking for. Thank you. It's Exemplary service to the club. Um, we do not have any this semester, but watch out for those next semester, and they are cool things to strive for. It's really neat. Um, but Apart from special ranks, we would like to recognize Zachary Yarrow for his incredible service to STAR this semester. Um, he has just a ton of posters, a ton of RPR. He helps keep us on track and And uh, each of the bridge crew uh, has something uh, for you. So we'll start the captain and move down. Hello. Um, I would like to recommend that people read Ava's Demon. Um, I'm not just being narcissistic. It is a really cool webcomic. The art is beautiful. Um, and I highly recommend it. We're also going to be posting links to all of the things that we're recommending when we post this as both Facebook, Slack, Twitter, all you know. of the social medias. Yeah. That as well. Um, I would like to recommend to you all Subsurface Circular, uh, which is a really short uh, but really good narrative-based game uh, that came out a little bit earlier this year, where you play as a robot detective on the Subsurface, subsurface Circular, which is a, uh, a subway line underneath one of the major cities uh, in this world. Uh, so you, uh, over the course of this game, which takes about maybe four hours, uh, you uncover um, this like huge spanning plot uh, through dialogue trees and interacting with other robots. And uh, once again. I highly recommend that you pick it up. I would like to recommend the book Player Piano by Kurt Vonnegut. It is a dystopian novel where um, machines have taken over all the jobs in the world and there's no jobs left for people. And it's dealing with that. It's very good book. <laughs> that sounds really interesting. And <laughs> um, Cameron's going to announce what is being recommended by our comms officer, John Fitch.
Um, so yeah, um, speaking for John, uh, John wants to recommend to you all the Ender's Game novella, which, uh, as you are know, there's Ender's Game, which is a full novel, but it actually started out as a much shorter novella. Uh, so you can check that out as well. It's a much shorter read, but it's uh, just as good from what he says. Um, and I'm going to be announcing our uh, chief engineer, Claire's recommendation. Hers is peanut butter cup cookies. Um, and again, the recipe will be in the link. Because cookies are good. If you're allergic to peanut butter, don't do not do this. <laughs> please, please. Wonderful. And from there, I will hand it off to myself to do uh, the mission that you are all here to enjoy, which is making sense of Metal Gear. Good luck, Lieutenant. Thank you. Uh, do we have a clicker? Oh, I don't get it. It's in the thing. <laughs> is it in the podium? Um, no, it's not in the lecture. Is it by where she was sitting in it? Oh, here it is. It's, it was behind me the whole time. Oh, my God. And it's my fault. <laughs> <point. laughs> As per usual. Um, All right, everybody. Welcome to Making Sense of Metal Gear, and a relatively in-depth presentation about um, each main series Metal Gear game. So we're going to start off with uh, spoiler policy. Uh, obviously, in order to go in depth about these games, we're going to have to spoil basically all of them. These are the games that we're going to be going over over the course of this mission. Um, so, and how the spoiler policy works is if you see this game title in the bottom left corner of this slide, um, then while I speak on this slide, that game is going to be spoiled, and some of the information on the slide spoils that game. We are going to be moving forward in chronological order of the game releases. So this starts with Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, goes into Peace Walker, then into Metal Gear Solid 5, that includes Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain, uh, Metal Gear Classic, uh, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and then finally Metal Gear Solid 4. So that is the order of this presentation. Uh, and I will announce before we move on to a new game so that anyone who is yet to play that game and wants to not have it spoiled can leave and we will pick you up afterwards. Any questions? While I go through this, this is, you know, the entire point of this is to get everyone at least, like, you know, kind of understanding of a really complicated plot. So I will take questions during the presentation, but please keep your questions to clarification as to what I'm speaking of. You know, not sort of discussion-based questions. We'll do discussion at the end if we have time. So questions from this, Alex. Okay. Are you going by order of game release or by order of time? So this, we're going in chronological order, not release order. So the, the presentation starts with Metal Gear Solid 3, not Metal Gear. Um, you have, was it the same question? Yeah. Okay, yes. So reminder, as we move forward, feel free to ask questions, but please keep them to clarification, not for starting discussion. All right, so uh, first thing is that this slide actually contains spoilers for Metal Gear Solid V, um, already right out the book. Um, so first thing that we're going to talk about is that the various different snakes that are all involved throughout the Metal Gear franchise. Um, there is, it starts with Naked Snake, uh, who is later renamed to Big Boss. Uh, there is his body double, Punish or Venom Snake. Uh, there is his, uh, one of his clone slash sons, Solid Snake. Uh, another clone slash son, Liquid Snake, and the third clone, Solidus Snake, uh, along with Raiden, who is in uh, no biological relation to uh, Big Boss, but uh, is given the code name Snake. So, um, just a brief timeline about when each main character Snake takes place um, throughout, uh, from Metal Gear Solid 3 up into and including Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, we follow Naked Snake slash Big Boss. Uh, throughout the duration of Metal Gear Solid V, we focus mostly, uh, by focus, I mean play as. Throughout uh, Metal Gear Solid V, the majority of it, you play as uh, his body double Venom Snake, and then 
throughout the rest of the Metal Gear franchise, excluding the majority of Metal Gear Solid 2, you play as Solid Snake. So when talking about the individual snakes, I will just refer to them as Snake just for brevity's sake, um, but I will clarify um, as often as possible when we are transitioning to a new snake. Off, uh, the history of Metal Gear actually begins uh, before the first game. Um, this is sort of a setup to Metal Gear Solid 3. It uh, begins in World War II uh, with the boss. Not big boss, but the boss. And her group of the Cobra Unit, which is um, hugely credited for winning World War II um, for the Allied powers. Um, the boss had a child during this time, and it was taken by the Philosophers. The Philosophers was a, um, a group of some of the most powerful nations in uh, the Allied powers who, uh, over the course of World War II and uh, immediately afterwards, uh, got together um, a collection of $600 billion, or no, $100 billion, uh, known as the Philosopher's Legacy. They split amongst the three of them uh, in order to uh, process their own weapons, R&D, uh, in order to make sure that the world uh, never drops into a global conflict uh, ever again, with, of course, these three nations sharing a uh, power position at the top. So, um, this brings us into the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 3, which takes place during the Cold War. Uh, the major players in uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 and the nations that they work under. Uh, first, we have um, Colonel Volgan, who takes uh, the Spetsnaz, uh, troops um, under Major Ocelot and uh, makes his own defection, his secret, his own secret defection under the USSR from Khrushchev, who was in charge during the time. Um, also under him is one of his head researchers, uh, uh, Sokolov, Nikolai Sokolov, who's a rocket scientist and is helping develop uh, Colonel Bogan's own private uh, nuclear program. Um, and then under the uh, United States, there is um, the boss. I, or there is, um, in order to stop Volgan and recover Sokolov, um, a unit is set up underneath Major Zero uh, with advice from the boss, the hero from World War II. They're going to send a naked snake into the USSR undetected in order to um, retrieve Sokolov, who wishes to defect to uh, the United States. Um, we'll get into this character in just one moment. So this is Operation Virtuous Mission where the goal is to retrieve Sokolov um, so that he can defect safely and obtain the plans to the Shadowhawk, which is a long distance uh, or a medium range uh, nuclear uh, capable tank. So uh, it eliminates the need for a silo and could theoretically launch a nuke from anywhere in the world if not monitored carefully. Unfortunately, the mission goes awry and uh, the boss actually betrays Snake and the United States and defects to the Soviet Union. Um, she hands, she gives Colonel Logan a uh, portable short-range nuclear uh, missile launcher uh, that he then fires on his own nation um, and frames the boss for it in order to cause a, um, a more global, um, globally known coup d'etat that he wants to take over the USSR. Um, so, like I mentioned, the US is, is framed for this. Um, Shagohad nearly completed, um, it's taken away by Colonel Volgan in the wake of the nuclear detonation. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, Khrushchev uh, tries to keep this under wraps as much as he can, but the philosophers, which are again the United States, Russia, and China, are all aware of his defection, and they decide that the, um, the only way to keep this under wraps is um, to resends a naked snake into the Soviet Union to kill his former mentor, the boss, and uh, destroy the Shadow Hod. So this moves into Operation Snake Eater, which is the majority of Metal Gear Solid 3. So uh, the first thing that Snake was supposed to do is uh, meet up with uh, some more defectors to, two more defectors to uh, the Soviet Union. Um, Adam and uh, Eva. So this character here is Eva, who is um, the one of the defectors that Snake was supposed to meet. However, um, Adam never showed up. Um, so um, while while they were waiting for Adam, 
the Spetsnaz, who was under Colonel Volgan, attacked, and Snake and Eva were separated. Um, over the course of the mission, Snake learned that Vulcan's real aim was to partly to start a coup d'etat within the Soviet Union, but also to collect the philosopher's legacy of $100 billion for himself so that he could become more powerful than any of the philosophers and keep um, and basically run uh, the entire world. Um, so Snake's mission was uh, added under the pretense of not only did he have to kill the boss and uh, destroy the Shadow Hut, but he also had to um, retrieve the philosopher's legacy from Vulcan uh, for back to the um, back to the philosophers. So at the end of the mission, Snake manages to kill the boss, um, takes her uh, her prime rifle, and becomes her successor of Big Boss. In the post mission. Um, Eva actually steals the Philosopher's Legacy, uh, the microfilm that contains its location. She steals it from Snake and reveals herself to be a double agent for China. Uh, fortunately, um, she was outsmarted uh, by Revolver Ocelot. Um, yeah, she was outsmarted uh, by Revolver Ocelot, who managed to um, get half of the Philosopher's Legacy from Vulcan before and replace it with a fake before it was handed off to Snake, which was then stolen by Eva. Um, Snake also managed to destroy the Shagohod in his mission. So in killing the boss and destroying the Shagohod, it was a mission success. Uh, so because this is, while not technically a Metal Gear, is the predecessor to all Metal Gears. And over the course of this mission, uh, we are going to have all of the stats of all of the Metal Gears because uh, nuclear tanks are really bad, but also really cool. Um, so. This tank uh, features a um, inter ballistic or a, a uh, intermediate range ballistic missile. And the really interesting thing about the Shagohod is that it is able to launch this missile uh, in a much smaller capacity than a silo because the tank itself acts as the first stage of a three stage rocket. So uh, it requires a three mile runway in order to get up to the speed of the first stage. So the tank acts at the first stage and then launches the rocket immediately into the second stage. So the first stage of speed actually comes from the tank. Uh, it then has a couple of other armaments uh, to defend itself uh, from attack uh, that Snake was able to beat because he is just the coolest ever. A lot of backstabbing and betrayals, uh, and by the end of it, after all the flags had fallen, uh, it turns out Colonel Volgan was defeated uh, and killed by Snake, and his, his coup d'etat was, um, was also defeated. Um, it turns out that the boss, who um, we everyone thought defected to the Soviet Union, was actually working for the United States the whole time. It was originally her job to get the philosopher's legacy from Volgan, but once he launched a nuke on his own territory, the only way to um, cover it up, and the only way that the rest of the nations uh, would agree to this plan is if they had a scapegoat. So Snake did have to kill the boss, who was still working for the United States. He had to kill one of his own comrades, uh, specifically for political reasons. Um, Sokolov uh, successfully defected to the United States. Um, and it turns out that Revolver Ocelot was a deep cover plant uh, in the Soviet Union uh, from the Spetsnaz by the philosophers and was actually the child that uh, the boss bore on the battlefield uh, during World War II. So, um, and of course, um, as I mentioned, Eva was secretly a spy for China. So, uh, by the end of everything, um, Ocelot had recovered one half of the philosopher's legacy and turned it back over to the United States. Uh, the other half is missing and um, assumed to be under USSR control. So as the Cold War advanced and China began to lose its status as a superpower and the United States um, and Russia began to gain power uh, from the philosopher's legacy. Question, please. Didn't they very specifically say that Ocelot was Adam? Yes, yes. Yes, you're correct. Um, Ocelot is Adam, the um, agent that never actually, that never showed up to the meeting spot. Um, he did, but he uh, did not break his cover when there was an unaccounted for agent um, at the original meeting point. So he secretly um, assisted Snake throughout the duration of um, Snake Eater, uh, unknown to Snake's knowledge. About to move into Peace Walker, so are there any questions on Metal Gear Solid 3? Okay, 
So, well, I'm sorry. Uh, before we move into Peace Walker, we need to do a little bit of world history in between. And this slide contains spoilers for Metal Gear Solid 4. So, um, with the philosophers officially disbanded um, and uh, how close the world was thrown into chaos, um, the original members of Operation Snake Eater, Ocelot, uh, Big Boss, who was formerly Naked Snake, but after defeating uh, the boss, he was awarded the title of Big Boss. Um, Major Zero, who was in charge of the original operation, Paramedic, who was the chief medical officer, um, Eva, who then um, defected once again from the um, from China to um, this group of philosophers um, after falling in love with Snake, and Signet, who was the uh, weapons officer. Um, all of these people came together to form uh, the Patriots. So uh, the Patriots, with the permission of the United States, um, and their portion of the philosopher's legacy um, decided to create a unified world uh, in accordance to uh, the boss's wishes. So um, it was uh, revealed in uh, the boss's memoirs, uh, or rather from um, her conversations with Snake uh, before he had to kill her, that um, her dream was for um, a world where soldiers are no longer tied to nations. Um, and this central idea uh, throughout the course of the rest of the game series, um, different people interpreting this in different ways causes um, a lot of chaos and a lot of the uh, events that set the games into motion. Uh, but the first people to try to interpret this are the Patriots. Uh, the Patriots have a couple of code names and uh, counter names, such as Cypher or the Wally Lule Low. Um, so Big Boss becomes uh, a global idol uh, as the world's greatest soldier. Um, soldiers all over the globe tell stories um, of how fearsome he is on the battlefield, how um, he took on the entire uh, Spetsnaz by himself, and how he single-handedly uh, defeated uh, the defecting uh, former champion of World War II. Um, but as uh, the fame continued and Big Boss was known as the ultimate soldier, um, he decided that he no longer felt that the Patriots were properly upholding the boss's vision. Um, he didn't think that a single uh, unified world order at the expense of um, individuals is what the boss wanted. Uh, Big Boss believed that uh, the boss had a more soldier-centric uh, soldier centric vision. Uh, so um, he left Cypher slash the Patriots um, to pursue the boss's vision on his own. So uh, we are getting into a little bit of the prelude to Peace Walker. Uh, so uh, Bob, Big Boss uh, slash Naked Snake leaves the Patriots and forms the Military Sons 14S, or uh, the MSF. Um, so what he does here is that he uh, goes out uh, into the Caribbean Sea and um, establishes a independent, um, not necessarily a nation, but an independent collection of uh, soldiers who are not um, privy to any nation's political ideologies um, and allows uh, soldiers to fight for what they believe in as opposed to what political generals believe in. Um, so they go on um, a couple of short missions. Oh, another thing, another major thing that they do is they serve as a military to nations that do not have one. Uh, so that that allows um, so this the idea was that it would perpetrate that um, nations wouldn't have to establish their own military. Smaller nations um, would not have to establish their own military in order to compete with the other major nations because they can just hire uh, the MSF. So this slide got a little messed up. That's bad. Um, so obviously the Patriots were not a huge fan of uh, their prized soldier, their figurehead, their idol, the arguably the greatest soldier who ever lived, going off and doing his thing on their own. Um, so Major Zero, who is in charge of the Patriots, um, creates a cloning process of Big Boss using some of the DNA that they had left over. Um, with Eva uh, volunteering to be the surrogate mother, um, eight embryos were fertilized with Big Boss's genes. And um, five of them uh, were, no, six of them were aborted. Um, so the genes of each of these embryos uh, were modified to varying degrees, um, each of them receiving more of the dominant or the recessive genes. And the two that were not aborted 
or the one containing all of Big Boss's dominant genes and the one containing all of Big Boss's recessive genes. Now, uh, this is important because it was found that um, all of the, uh, through uh, years of genetic research, it was found that all of the traits that made Big Boss the perfect soldier were, in fact, recessive genes. So, um, all of these genes were put into one child, um, while the other child uh, remained as a, uh, another clone and as a parallel to Big Boss uh, to make sure that the experiment was a success. Because theoretically, the clone with all of the recessive good soldier genes would beat out the clone uh, that has all of the dominant non-soldier genes in every situation. Um, later, a third clone was made uh, as a perfect copy of Big Boss. This clone was given accelerated aging so that the Patriots could once again have their figurehead. So uh, as we move into the Peace Walker incident, we move back to the MSF, uh, which is Big Boss's uh, private army. Uh, so they received their first uh, major job from Professor Ramon Galvez Mena um, and his prize student pods from the University for Peace. So they come to uh, the MSF saying uh, that some strange military organization has moved into Costa Rica and uh, they have some strange unknown machines that they are bringing in. These two, uh, as um, major uh, prophesiers of peace, uh, Paz's name actually meaning peace in Spanish, um, they want these soldiers out of their country. And without a military of their own, and all um, diplomatic efforts having already failed, um, like several civilians who had gone in to ask them to leave had been captured already, um, and a small guerrilla force uh, within Costa Rica had already uh, been um, formed, uh, these two pleaded with Snake and the MSF for him to intervene um, and get these uh, this strange military and these strange uh, machines of war out of their peaceful nation. Inevitable twist uh, to this mission is that um, the professor was actually a member of the KGB, um, and these strange machines were actually the CIA's version of the Shagohad, or the Peace Walker. Um, the Peace Walker is a fully autonomous nuclear deterrence machine. Uh, the purpose of the Peace Walker is to um, be deployed anywhere in the world and be fully autonomous in launching a counter-nuclear strike. Peace Walker is unable to deliver the first strike, uh, but um, as an AI, it will, um, if it detects a strike moving into the United States, it will offer a counter-strike to the nation that fired the first strike. Uh, now, the purpose of Peace Walker um, is in, uh, lies in the theory of nuclear deterrence which you know, is an actual thing that happens during, you know, we didn't nuke Russia because, um, and Russia didn't nuke us because of mutually assured destruction, which is um, if we nuke them, they're going to nuke us and everybody loses. Um, so the CIA developed the Peace Walker to remove the human element out of it. The CIA decided that there was too high a chance of the human who had to press the button to launch the nuke deciding that they did not want to wipe out the world that they were already screwed and um, it was only going to create more loss of human life to deliver a counter strike. And um, they decided that this, um, this possibility was too high um, in order for deterrence to be upheld, so they created their own um, deterrence machine. So Snake here now has a decision to make. If he allies himself with this member of the KGB and kicks the CIA out of Costa Rica, he is officially declaring himself an enemy to the United States and um, the Patriots. Um, so just going into a little bit more um, about the Peace Walker, you may notice that it looks different from here to here uh, because it has both a quadruped and a bipedal mode. Um, they went from the tank treads to actual uh, bionics, or rather um, to actual uh, legs because it allows the tank to um, universal terrain. Uh, you no longer need um, the runways in order to launch the nukes. You no longer need direct roads to move the tank around. Theoretically, Peace Walker could be anywhere. Um, this is its mobile mode, moving from place to place, and this is its firing mode, um, where it uh, gets itself a lower center of gravity, I believe, in order to launch its ballistic missile. Um, it also has on it, um, 
it's uh, a hydrogen core, a uh, hydrogen-powered core that can transfer into a hydrogen bomb. So as a last, a last ditch effort, um, Peace Walker could theoretically sneak into a hostile nation and detonate itself once it fires its uh, nuclear payload. Um, so over the course of um, over the course of Operation Peace Walker, um, Snake acquired some very important assets to his team, uh, both by Dr. Strangelove and um, Dr. Emmerich, uh, Dr. Huey Emmerich. So uh, Dr. Strangelove, both of these were former uh, members of the CIA, uh, who Snake convinced to defect to the MSF. Uh, Dr. Strangelove is a, a genius AI uh, development scientist. Um, and was able to completely develop uh, the mammal pod by studying the boss, the hero of World War II, and um, attempted to recreate her persona into the AI in, in order to keep up, uh, because it is impossible, she says that it is impossible to determine what um, the boss meant uh, from her legacy without asking her herself. So Strangelove uh, spent all of her time trying to recreate the boss digitally. Um, which the CIA um, funded on the um, uh, the condition that this AI would then go into the Peace Walker, um, and then Dr. Huey Emmerich, who is disabled from or who is paralyzed from the waist down, um, from a very early age became interested in uh, bipedal technologies, and he was recruited in order to create uh, the Peace Walker's um, bipedal capabilities. So um, Snake recruited both of these to uh, the MSF, and then after destroying Peace Walker and officially declaring himself an enemy to the United States, in order to get his own deterrent, he used these two scientists to create his own Metal Gear, Metal Gear Zeke. So uh, this Metal Gear um, is uh, fully autonomous, similar to Peace Walker, and um, also will only deliver a counter nuclear strike. Um, it was incapable of firing a strike um, on the first shot um, to protect themselves from the United States because the United States, um, once they figure out where Snake is, would just nuke him unless he had his own deterrent. Uh, so, uh, Pete Walker, or rather, this, these are the stats of Metal Gear Zeke. Um, it is significantly more armed and portable than Peace Walker. Uh, the first official Metal Gear. Oh, the intercontinental, the intercontinental ballistic missile, uh, they did not develop their own. They retrieved it uh, from the destroyed Peace Walker. Uh, question. Yeah, Metal Gear, um, well, you can, you can still construct Metal Gear Zeke. Uh, you just can't nuclearly, nuclearly arm it until um, after the Peace Walker mission, because you need to get the missile from Peace Walker. Um, there is an alternate ending, or rather there is the true ending, which you do by completing um, most of the side missions, which I will get to in just a moment. Do uh, you have a question? Yeah. Um... Oh my god! It's Snake! <laughs> you got me. All right, this is John. Um, he will be assisting me throughout the uh, remainder of the duration of this mission. Um, Anyway, so um, that's Metal Gear Z. Um, and as I mentioned, there actually is a double twist to Peace Walker. Uh, that um, the prize student of the um, professor, secretly KGB officer, is actually a member of Cypher, a plant sent by the Patriots in order to keep an eye on Snake um, and update them of uh, his whereabouts and his operations. And as soon as she reveals to the Patriots that Snake was developing his own Metal Gear, uh, her, she was then activated as an insurgent. She made, she secretly made modifications to Metal Gear to allow for a human pilot, hijacked it her, herself, and offered Snake an ultimatum. He and the MSF would join the Patriots, uh, uh, rejoin the Patriots officially once and for all, or um, she would use Metal Gear Zeke to deliver a nuclear strike on the east coast of the United States from um, MSF, branding Snake an extremist terrorist and removing him of his only nuclear deterrent. Okay. Do we know uh, where they got the name Metal Gear for their machine? We do, actually. Um, originally, the person who created it, who was not Sokolov, but another Soviet scientist, um, believed that there was a missing link between the Shagohad and a soldier, between what made a soldier efficient and what made the Shagohad destructive. 
Um, and he called this a metal gear, where metal being the robot and gear meaning like the equipment, like yeah. the soldier. Okay. So moving into uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, um, we're going to talk about Ground Zeroes at first. Um, so yes, this is your starting spoilers for Metal Gear Solid Five from this slide on. So Metal Gear Solid Five begins with the Ground Zeroes incident. Uh, so, while Snake uh, was off um, at uh, Camp Omega in Cuba, um, rescuing um, was uh, presumed dead, but found to be recaptured um, and held by uh, the Patriots at uh, their uh, prison in Cuba. Metal hmm? Did he destroy Metal Gear? Yeah, Metal Gear Zeke was destroyed. Okay. Um, question. Is Cuba, is that supposed to be Guantanamo Bay? Or is that It's seven more time. Yes, um, Camp, Camp Omega is in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. So it is in um, U.S. owned territory within Cuba. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that whole thing. Do you have a question? To be clear, this is still original Slick, original Snake? Yes, this okay. is still this is still Big Boss. Um, this this one is, in Ground Zero that is Naked Snake. Yes. Okay, but Peace Walker did have mm -hmm. other snakes. Well, no, Peace Walker, no, there's still the same snake. snake. There's only been one snake so far. Okay, so the other snake haven't actually shown up. Yes, that is correct. Okay, and there's the white kids. Yeah, the, the the cloning process, the Los Enfants Terrible problem, where they where they cloned the snakes several times. Um, those are still children at this okay. point in time. Uh, they're not fully grown adults yet. Um, but um, anyway, so while Snake was away rescuing Paws from Camp Omega. Um, they were, uh, the MSF was still developing, redeveloping their nuclear program after Metal Gear Z was destroyed. Um, and the UN became suspicious and requested to do a, um, requested a uh, inspection of MSF uh, to prove that um, they were not actually nuclear capable, nor were they developing a nuclear program. Um, Snake and his first officer, Miller, um, denied the UN uh, permission to come in. However, uh, Huey Everett went behind their backs and allowed the UN to come in and inspect Mother Base. Um, so with their uh, backs to the wall, um, they removed most of the, um, most of the armaments directly from Mother Base, um, hid everything in the lower levels, all of their research, everything, and allowed the UN to do their inspection uh, while Snake was away. Um, it then turned out that this was actually a ploy by Cypher in order to destroy Mother Base. Um, so with all of their armaments and defenses hidden away, it was an easy strike to destroy everything that Snake had built up over the years. Perhaps you could say, they played them like a damn fiddle. They played us like a damn fiddle! Sorry, I have to do that. Um, also, uh, Paws, uh, after rescued, uh, had not one, but two bombs hidden inside of her body. Um, wait, and wait. So they pulled out the first bomb and threw it out of the helicopter, and then she said, there's a second bomb, and jumped out of the helicopter moments before the bomb's detonation. Um, the helicopter crashed into um, a, a partially standing area um, of Mother Base, and um, Snake, Kaz, and um, a singular medic were the only survivors from that crash, and were... Um, were evacuated immediately and moved to a um, secret facility um, on Cyprus. Question? So, pause is not cause. How is it? No, 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 pause is not cause. Pause is dead. Pause is exploded. Uh, Kaz is Kazagira Kaz Miller. Oh, okay. Who's first officer? Did two bombs that pause? Well, one was in their stomach and the other was further up. I still think that's what we're dealing with. Hey. Well, well, the thing was that they would remove the first bomb and be like, oh, hey, we got the bomb, and then she would explode from the second bomb. So they knew they'd get her. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, yes, they planned for snakes to rescue Paws. But it's okay, I hated that ending too. <laughs> Just to clarify, they is Cypher, yes. not the U.S. government. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Um, so, Although, um, as the story goes on, they become more and more the same thing. Yes. Okay, question. Is Cypher still run by Zero at this point? Yes. Okay. For right now, yes, Cypher is still run by zero. Cypher is run by zero until about 2001. Um, so there's a Metal Gear Solid 5 thing that I'm about to get into that yeah. kind of puts that into a, a slight shift. Um, but first we have to talk about Zoth and Cypher. Um, so what, this is the um, emblem of 
Fox, which is the organization that Naked Snake was under throughout Operation Snake Eater. Um, unbeknownst to um, everyone but the US government, there was a counter unit named Zoff, a shadow unit to Fox, whose entire purpose was basically to be fancy janitors um, and clean up any evidence of Snake's um, actual time in uh, the Soviet Union, any presence of Americans whatsoever, they cleaned it all up. Um, so any American bullet shells left in the ground, um, any sort of um, US branded supplies that Snake may have left behind for whatever reason, it was Zoff's job to go into the USSR after the dust had settled and recollect it all before it was discovered. Um, and in charge of all of this was Skullface. So the entire time you're playing Dungeon Gear Solid 3, there's this some guy in close behind you who just has his stuff pin and is just collecting all your new bullets. I'm not sure technically not. Yeah, it's but I would happened. like to believe that. <laughs> it, 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 it happened afterwards, after the dust had settled and after the Shagohad was destroyed, Zoth was deployed to Zoth is actually the despawn mechanic, where uh, after you, you shoot at a body and it like, you, lays there for a while, it just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually Zoth. So um, that is what Zoth began as. Um, however, um, Skullface became um, unhappy with the way that him and his unit was treated. Um, but he kept this anger to himself for a while and slowly began to gain trust with Major Zero. Um, he, retreat, he got so much trust with Major Zero that he was actually given two weapons of mass destruction, uh, both a, the latest generation of Metal Gear, the Holanthropus, and um, access to a series of vocal cord parasites. Uh, which infect your vocal cords and uh, grow um, based off of each of each one is genetically engineered to search or to feel for certain vibrations that your throat makes when you speak a specific language. Um, so if you are infected with the vocal cord parasite, the only way to stop them from killing you is to no longer speak the language of the parasite that you are infected with. Um, so after being given both of these weapons of mass destruction, um, Skullface decided to um, take Boss's wishes, his interpretation, into his own hands, where um, his interpretation of a world where soldiers uh, are no longer um, due to, or are no longer privy to the wishes of the higher governments, um, his thought is to destroy all of the higher governments and throw the world into chaos. He planned to use the Holanthropus uh, to uh, kickstart. He plans to sell it and its plans uh, across the world and kickstarts a huge um, nuclear arms race while simultaneously, while simultaneously deploying the English strain of the vocal cord parasite, um, as English was quickly becoming the lingua franca or the common language of um, the civilized world. So with all of these nations unable to easily and quickly communicate with one another before having to learn entirely new languages and collect new, um, new translators and train them and go through security clearances and all of that, um, the new key would kick, re-kickstart a global nuclear arms race. So what he did is he actually, um, and before he, kicks, before he took um, the boss's wishes in his own hands, he poisoned uh, Major Zero with an early rendition of um, a vocal cord parasite, um, disabling him heavily, physically and mentally. While he was still um, capable in both ways, um, it drastically increased the time it took Zero to do anything. Um, however, unbeknownst to Skullface, Zero had already began handing over um, the Patriots and um, all of their power and wishes uh, into um, AI. So um, some details about Sahal Entropus, um, the upright forerunner to the nuclear age. Uh, what makes this Metal Gear unique is that um, it is bipedal but it also stands upright. It has the greatest, oh hello, it has the greatest um, actual uh, non-nuclear combat capabilities of any Metal Gear in the past, um, along <coughs> with um, the same nuclear strike capabilities of previous Metal Gears. With maybe Psycho Mantis for scale. Yes, um, so Sahalanthropus is actually um, controlled via uh, uh, Psychomantis here, who um, Skullface um, actually captured from Psycho. Another possible error for the monster was 
not wearing the exact same silk, but he went crazy from like popping my citizen. Yes, um, and he's already been used for that purpose by this point. Um, Psychomantis is a product of um, Russia's own attempt to make their own super soldier. Um, they invested heavily um, in um, early nanomachines and uh, psychokinesis to uh, try to develop their own super soldier. Um, Psychomantis, however, went rogue and joined Skullface because um, he had already gone crazy at this point, and um, the only thing that he cared about uh, was a single person's lust for revenge. And because Skullface had the um, greatest lust for revenge that Psychomantis had ever encountered, he worked for him. Until slightly later, when um, Psychomantis met um, a young boy by the name of Eli, who was actually the um, recessive gene clone of Big Boss, who had run away uh, from the uh, facility that he was contained at um, and had gone into hiding in Africa. Um, the two. Um, Wait, wasn't it the uh, dominant gene? No, wait, wait. You yeah, know, not the dominant gene. The recessive gene, soldier genes. No, that's that was he yeah, that was Solomon, who was the recessive soldier. No, because no, Solomon in MGS he kept yelling that he was. Yeah, in the, in the in the end credit scene, they clear uh, Ocelot clarifies that Solid Snake was the recessive. Yes, yes, no, you're right. I got that backwards. I apologize to everybody. Um, it's very easy to get things backwards here because, like, whole several gotcha moments. They, they'll change the meanings of one phrase several times in 30 minutes. Yes, <laughs> we'll get into that shortly. Um, but, yes, yeah, so that's Saul and Um So, from the brink of chaos, um, Snake, obviously, um, with um, the, with Skullface's plan beginning to jump into action, um, began his own, um, you know, obviously had to save the world and stop him. Uh, so the MSF was um, under the new name, the Diamond Dogs. Um, after the helicopter crash, Snake went into a six year coma, eight year coma? Um, I think an eight year coma. I think it was eight years ago. Yeah, went into um, an eight year coma. And when he awoke, um, he was, uh, when he awoke in the hospital in Cyprus, he was assisted um, by a strange man by the name of Ishmael, uh, who helped him escape, disappear. Um, Snake uh, began building up uh, the Diamond Dogs and their new offshore base, um, and eventually uh, re-recruited uh, Huey Emmerich um, and um, a new scientist uh, by the name of Kotalker, who uh, developed the uh, vocal cord parasites that Skullface had used. Skullface attempted to um, betray and kill Kotalker, uh, but um, Snake rescued him before that happened, and Kotalker then defected to the Diamond Dogs. Um, besides Skullface, Snake also had to um, overcome uh, many other trials in stopping his plan, uh, such as an instance where uh, the English strain of the vocal cord parasites was released on um, his own base, uh, where he had to go in and um, execute all of the soldiers who had been infected. It was in English. It what was strain was it? It was in Congo. For the African language. For Kotaka? No, for the uh, slaughter, because remember, it's the outbreak starts on the other base, you put everybody in quarantine. Mm -hmm. to stop oh, that's the right, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, there are two quarantines. The first one is uh, the first one is the condom, I think, and the second one was another strain, a different type of strain. Right, because so. Huey releases it. Yes. So there's one strain that Skullface releases, which is the Congo strain. What happened to the Congo strain? Because I don't remember ever carrying that. After you, no, after you kick everyone out who is infected with it, there is then um, another strain that is that is released um, that is significantly spreads much faster across mother base because it is English and that is the um, language that is spoken on mother base. So um, behind the scenes, so what was actually happening um, during the course of Metal Gear Solid Five um, is that the strange man Ishmael was the real big boss, and the character that you play as is Big Boss's body double. Um, so as um, Big Boss goes off to found his own nation, he needs to do this incognito, and he needs a distraction, and he needs the world's eyes elsewhere. 
So he works with um, Revolver Ocelot in order to um, orchestrate his body double to completely take his place in all shapes and forms. And the only two people who knew about this body double were Snake and Ocelot. And Ocelot, um, working so closely with the double and working um, closely with um, all, all sorts of people, and if he ever slipped, the entire thing would fall apart. So he diagnosed, or he gave himself self hypnosis to forget that the body double wasn't actually Snake. So the only person um, who knew throughout the duration um, of um, of Metal Gear Solid Five that uh, that uh, Venom Snake was not the real big boss, was the actual real big boss. Um, Huey Emmerich also um, purposefully betrayed the Diamond Dogs because he thought them in the wrong and himself in the right, purposely releasing the English strain upon the base. Um, also um, killing Dr. Strangelove, uh, who was the AI development, uh, but not before um, fathering a child with her. Um, so he gets his comeuppance later. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, he does. Um, so now moving into um, Outer Heaven. So while this is going on. Oh, wait, we have a question. Ooh. Um, sorry, that was just a very quick killing Dr. Strangelove thing, but like fathering a child with someone required like nine months. So how long was this interaction? They were, okay. They were so really while they were developing, um, <laughs> Huey Emmerich and Dr. Strangelove were working together um, to develop Sahel um, and were in a relationship during that time. Oh, okay, um, so this was an ongoing thing. And yes. In the end. It's yes, like, in the, oh, in the actually, end. I'm gonna kill her. Yes. And they end up separate. Yes, and, um, and, yeah, and Huey's son is taken from him. Um, Strangelove actually um, sort of gets wise to the fact that Huey is secretly insane and sends the child away. Uh, which I believe is one of the reasons that he kills her. Okay, Outer Heaven. Anyway, back to Outer Heaven. So this secret, this secret military nation that Big Boss created in South Africa, um, he named Outer Heaven, and this is ultimately what the Diamond Dogs reformed into. Diamond Dogs were reformed into this, and the and Venom Snake was in charge of the Diamond Dogs. If so facto, Venom Snake became in charge of Outer Heaven. Um, in the meantime, Big Boss returned to the United States Army and began, and began to head the Foxhound movement. Um, and during this time, the actual recessive clone, Dave, or Solid Snake, joins uh, Foxhound. Then we end up with Mission Intrude M313, I believe, um, where Solid Snake is sent after a, the plans for a super weapon that is possibly being developed in Outer Heaven by the U.S. Army. Or, the U.S. Army sent them in. Yes. Outer Heaven was developing a lot of <laughs> The TX-55 Metal Gear and that Big Boss is in charge of Outer Heaven. Um, so the body double. Big yeah. Boss's body double, Venom Snake, is in charge of Outer Heaven. Solid Snake does not realize that the two are not actually the same person. So he oh. thinks that his mission commander, um, the person in charge of Foxhound, is running Outer Heaven. Although he basically is. Yes. Because he ends up ducking out immediately. He ends up ducking out Fox Sound immediately after. Um, so he kills Venom Snake, and Outer Heaven is destroyed, bombed out by the, by the US government. Um, but as it turns out, that com the compound of Outer Heaven was housing many war, was housing several hundred war orphans. That were taken in by Big Boss and were also killed in the bombing because the US government saw them as a liability. So, this is the TX 55 Metal Gear that was developed in um, Outer Heaven. And uh, a lot of people go, oh, well, gee, how the heck did we go from this giant, upright, hugely um, like self defensive, capable Sahel Entropist to, to this tiny little TX 55? Um, isn't that a significant downgrade? Uh, to which we say, no, the entire purpose of a Metal Gear is to be able to launch a nuclear strike from anywhere in the world. Sahel Entropist was significantly too large to be moved around easily. It required um, somewhere between half a dozen to a dozen helicopters to be able to be moved from place to place. Significantly downsizing the size of the Metal Gear while also introducing um, additional ballistic missile capabilities. Um, Metal Gear could be transported and deployed anywhere in the world and then could move around by itself in its new deployed location significantly more covertly uh, than any previous Metal Gear iteration. 
Um, no, that, I think you covered it. Um, so then this goes on to, after, this conflict then goes on to after the Cold War. Um, the Cold War did end before, uh, but the consequences of this weren't felt until a few years after. Um, the U.S., the, the most unrealistic thing to ever happen in Metal Gear, the U.S. and the USSR fully disarm. All of their nuclear arsenal were sent to facilities on their, within their borders to be dismantled and uh, just rendered inoperable. But Russia's nukes were mysteriously disappearing while they were being transported. Soon enough, it became clear that a very, very small two buildings, Rogue Nation, was responsible for taking, was responsible for snatching these nukes, going by the name of Zanzibar Land. And by 1999, they became the only nuclear power in the world. So, Solid Snake, naturally, was sent to pull out of retirement to infiltrate Zanzibar Land. Um, in there, he discovers that Big Boss miraculously is alive <laughs> and is officially the president of Zanzibar Land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the later ones don't get any less dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Question. That's not even getting started on the deadly poisonous Zanzibar hamsters. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, God. Well, well that's not a Metal Gear thing. <laughs> no, that's in, that's in two. Oh, wait. <laughs> when, when did that happen? The poison, there was like an enemy that you encountered in two. The poisonous hamsters. I do not remember that. <laughs> it's a minor thing, but yeah. Uh, Alright. But, one of, but <laughs> anyway, the whole oil crisis averted in Tokyo 2 and someone figured out a way of. Yes, um, that. that was actually, well, yeah, that was, um, we weren't actually going to talk about it because it ends up not really being that big of an issue, but um, that was one of the things that Zanzibar was interested in. So while this was going on, um, a nuclear power was becoming thrown out. Um, a person was, was a uh, scientist created a, an organism that's capable of producing oil uh, and mass, just so you, so you can farm oil, basically. Um, and Zanzibar Land kidnapped this, this scientist, and this was ultimately the inciting incident that sent Snake to infiltrate Zanzibar in the first place to retrieve the scientist. And he then discovered the nuclear arsenal there. Yeah. Um, so, but the most interesting thing to pull out of this was not that the nukes were going on or that there was another Metal Gear or anything, it was that people who Snake had fought alongside with previously, uh, former Foxhound agents and rev, um, resistances against people who were in the resistance against Outer Heaven, all of which defected to Zanzibar land because they were because they were devoutly loyal to Big Boss. And this was the point when Snake learned the reasoning behind uh, formation of Outer Heaven. So remember here that throughout the, all of this, Solid Snake is working for the US government and unknowingly for um, the Patriots. Yeah. Important side note. Um, Metal Gear D. So um, another upgrade of this micro uh, Metal Gear um, sort of standout. This one has six missiles uh, that it can fire singularly, along with um, some of its own personal defense. This one is not necessarily. Well, this one is not necessarily a straight upgrade to Metal Gear TX55, um, as the missiles, while it has six are only short to medium range, whereas TX-55 had intermediate range. Right, so is this, is this weapon like tied to the nuclear weapon? Well, Metal Gear TX-55 was only about, I think it was 30 feet? It was 30 feet or 30 meters? 30 meters. It was 30 meters tall. Metal Gear D was about 45. So they're still large, but Sokolentropus was right. probably like 100 feet tall. Yeah, it was, it was more, more than. It was more than. It was very. It was a big boy. Uh, yeah, he was gigantic. Uh, so next, we move on to the president, the greatest figure in history, George Soros. Uh, no, uh, you mean George W. Bush. <laughs> Actually, you uh, mean I mean George Sears. Um, 
uh, George Sears, also known as Solidus Snake. He was the perfect clone of Big Boss that was created by Cypher during the Les Enfants de Libre project, um, and was under the care of the Patriots for his entire life. Now at this point, the Patriots had gone basically entirely out of the control of Major Zero, who was very, very old at the time, and um, the disease that, you, that Skullface had given him had gotten progressively worse. Mm -hmm. The Patriots was exclusively just a system of AIs. Yes. They were intermediate, but they were still AIs. When he was a teenager, he was sent into he was sent to Liberia to help with the Civil War. And there he ended up training child soldiers and military parents. And so as the and as the uh, big boss, he was treated as a sort of big boss surrogate, where the Patriots could phase him in and out as a sort of idol, like they did with the big boss. So. To continue with this, the Patriots allowed him to be elected as the 43rd president of the United States. Um, and under this, he acted under the Patriots' rule and started arms deals for the production of a Metal Gear on Shadow Moses Island. While this was going on, um, oh, there was something else. Oh, yeah. While this was going on, um, Solidus knew of the Patriots. He didn't know about the AIs. He still believed, he, along with everyone who was not a founding member of the Patriots, the Patriots were just a cabal of people still. Yes. So his ultimate goal was to perform so well in the eyes of the Patriots that he could become one of them. Yeah, so taking another step to the side here, we have Fox Eye. Um, so that, yeah, this is the next um, iteration um, from the technology um, of the that created the vocal cord parasites. How do you get a virus from a parasite? I don't know. Metal Gear, um, nano machines. So, uh, <laughs> so the way that the way that Fox Die works, as opposed to the vocal cord parasites, which uh, specifically targeted uh, the, the language was spoken, um, Fox Die specifically targets DNA strands. So when you create a strain of fox dye, you set it, you give it a specific DNA pattern. And um, so everyone can be a carrier of fox dye, but the only time you show symptoms is when um, it detects a DNA match. Fox dye, unless you have a fox dye, I believe fox dye is airborne to start off. Um, well, no, it needs to be injected and then it becomes airborne. Yes, it needs to be injected and then it becomes airborne. But anyone who comes in contact with it, uh, if they are infected with the standard airborne amount, um, it will pass out of their bloodstream normally unless they're injected as a carrier. Yes. Um, and um, if you receive it uh, by airborne means and it detects that you um, you have the DNA that it is programmed to attack, um, it releases TNF epsilon, uh, which, which is a tumor, um, a tumor enzyme. It attaches to heart cells. It will turn heart cells into tumors and ultimately cause apoptosis in heart cells, um, causing them to die and causing death of a heart attack within minutes. Shadow Moses incident. Um, so, Foxhound, uh, which again had gone rogue uh, during the um, operation of Zanzibar Land, um, was prior a um, U.S. Army based. Um, institution also is my shirt and the charm on my bag. I love Foxhound, they're so cool. Um, so they had um, special privileges and access to um, the Metal Gear program uh, on Shadow Moses Island, which is in Alaska. And was also an army program. So um, they were the primary defense of Metal Gear. So when they went rogue, it was extremely easy for them to take over the facility and then um, use Metal Gear to hold the world hostage. Um, yes, or rather planned to. Um, the two most important members of um, Foxhound are our good friend Revolver Ocelot and Liquid Snake, uh, who is one of the clones of Big Boss, the um, gene. He believes he's the recessive gene, but he's actually the dominant. Um, 
So yes, Revolver Ocelot is at this point still in league with the Patriots. Uh, so he specifically he was a plant that was put here. This mission to take over the new metal gear on Shadow Moses would fail. Yes. Um, so um, Solid Snake's mission uh, was to go to Shadow Moses Island, defeat the Foxhound Insurgency, the DARPA chief and the Arms Tech president, and shut down or destroy Metal Gear Rex. A railgun launched stealth nuclear warhead. The fantastic thing about Rex is that um, its launch, because it was railgun based and not rocket fuel based, was um, undetectable um, until it was too late. Um, it has some of its own um, self defense capabilities, but Again, most importantly, I um, believe it is the first Metal Gear to come equipped with a laser. The uh, Metal Gear D had a laser. All right. Yeah. Um, but so the really important thing about Metal Gear Rex is that it could covertly fire a nuclear um, missile from anywhere in the world, and because um, it could be very easily reloaded. Once again, because of its railgun technology. In addition, it's also the only Metal Gear that is capable of launching a nuclear warhead to any location on the planet from any location on the planet. So, so um, Snake, um, then, uh, in his mission, uh, he does succeed in um, killing every member of Foxhound, um, except for Revolver Ocelot, because of his secret infection with the um, Fox Dye virus. Uh, so while um, several of them um, kept either um, and uh, with some of their own um, like natural immunities or medications that they were already on, were able to resist fox die longer than others, um, eventually all of them fell to solid snake. However, interestingly enough, the arms tech president also died to fox die, um, and um, the DARPA chief is actually um, Sigint, one of the original founding members of the Patriots. Um, he, al he, he also died in this mission um, by Revolver Ocelot's hand. Specifically, he was killed by Revolver Ocelot to prevent the uh, Liquid Snake's mission from, from, from being completed. Yes. And he um, was also the Koi Octopus at this point? Well, Revolver Ocelot killed the real DARPA chief, um, but then um, the DARPA chief was secretly replaced by um, Decoy Octopus, who's can, um, who was then killed by Foxy. Who was then killed by Foxy. Or rather, Snake thinks that um, he mysteriously died of a heart attack, um, just as the Arms Tech president was. But that's not the case. Um, so, and then Snake then accidentally, um, because the shutdown and the startup process for Metal Gear are the same, um, and Liquid Snake does not have the capability to um, start up Metal Gear, he tricks Snake, he, uh, Liquid Snake tricks Solid Snake into starting it up himself. Liquid Snake then uh, gets inside uh, Metal Gear Rex, uh, and then defeats Metal Gear Rex uh, with the help of a scientist that he rescued over the course of the mission. Uh, who happens to be Huey Emmerich's son. Huey Emmerich's son, Hal Emmerich, um, who is not absolutely crazy. He is a nice boy who likes anime and video games. Absolutely crazy. Icon. Icon. So, um, Solid Snake de defeats Metal Gear and Liquid Snake inside. Uh, they then have a fist fight on the top of Metal Gear, uh, to which Liquid says, a fall from here would kill anyone, even you. Um, at, the, at the conclusion of the fist fight, Liquid Snake falls off of Metal Gear, um, and then chases them down a... <laughs> then chases them down a tunnel on a truck with a machine gun. <laughs> then gets shot with a machine gun several dozens of times, and doesn't actually die until Fox Side kills him. Well, yeah, gets shot with a machine gun several dozens of times, then flips the truck that he is over. <laughs> Um, and then slowly and dramatically crawls towards Solid Snake before saying, Fox, die! And then finally dies. Um, another important stuff, thing that happened over the course of the Shadow Moses incident is that Revolver Ocelot lost his arm, his right arm, in fact, the arm that he uses his revolver with. Um, that will come into play later. And they said that he had a weaker use. <laughs> Any other questions on No Gear Solid? Yes. You didn't mention it. Um, Ocelot killed Miller during this time. Yes, yes, yeah. that is true. Um, Kazuhiro Miller, Big Boss's um, executive officer, his XO, his first in command, 
um, who then trained Solid Snake um, before any of his adventures. Um, they were friends during the Diamond Dog, Revolver Ocelot and Kazuhira Miller, um, but then Ocelot killed Miller uh, because he was a loose end. It took his identity for the whole game. Um, actually, yeah, we go on. Okay. This uh, conflict, um, for a global event, we missed something important. Um, after uh, Liquid Snake was defeated, there are actually two endings to Metal Gear Solid, oh, right. depending on whether or not um, you submit to Ocelot's torture midway through the game. The canonical ending is if you do not submit to the torture, um, in which case um, you save um, someone uh, important to the mission, Merrill, uh, who is an undercover um, soldier uh, for uh, the United States. Um, and uh, the bombing of um, Shadow Moses Island is called off. So um, Shadow Moses Island survives, uh, Meryl survives, and Autobot survives. So as, um, as a result of this mission, um, the people who are in contact with Snake during it w became well aware of the fact that the US Army was covering up creating a Metal Gear in their uh, Shadow Moses. So um, Nastasha Romanenko create, writes a book about the truth of what happened on Moses Island, which becomes a number one bestseller and makes a laughing stock out of the US, Ar out of the US Army. And as a result, um, George Sears is forced by the Patriots to resign. But this doesn't stop the militaries from around the world from getting a hold of the test data for Metal Gear Rex, and which was released by Revolver Ocelot. Mm -hmm. so, and creating their own metal news. So the entire world is now very quickly um, speeding up their own nuclear development program to make their own versions of Metal Gear Rex. And um, several of the members from um, the Shadow Moses incident, uh, notably Solid Snake, Hal Emmerich, Melee, Melee um, and Nastasha form uh, philanthropy. So uh, they don't quite fully realize um, the true power of the Patriots, but they do recognize uh, that the United States is not the good guys in this situation and go rogue and form uh, philanthropy, which is which is specific goal is to seek out and um, stop the development of Metal Gears around the world. They are an NGO who are um, declared by several governments as terrorists. Yes. Um, so during one of these operations uh, where uh, philanthropy finds out that uh, the United States Marines are um, on a tanker, um, secretly shipping uh, a new Metal Gear um, to uh, a remote facility in order to do testing. Um, Philanthropy then deploys Solid State to infiltrate the tanker. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, it's got the coolest moment. Um, to um, infiltrate the tanker, um, collect um, images of it, um, and release them to the world uh, to show that uh, the United States, to show uh, without a shadow of a doubt that the United States is in fact once again amping up its nuclear weapons program. However, the mission goes awry with the arrival of Liquid Ocelot. <laughs> so, as we talked about before, um, Ocelot loses an arm in the Shadow Moses incident and is the only survivor from Fox Sound. Um, while the Patriots end up giving him a second, end up giving him an artificial arm. In Metal Gear Solid 2, it's implied that it's Liquid Snake's arm, but in Metal Gear Solid 4, it's implied it's, it looks like a mechanical arm, so like, we can't, we're not really sure which it is. But um, regardless of which, um, he replaces this arm and treats it as though, because of this arm, he's being possessed by Liquid Snake. <laughs> so he does this as a cover. Um, Liquid Ocelot, or rather Revolver Ocelot, um, does want to leave the Patriot organization. And he knows that he cannot leave of his own accord. The only way that he can do it is if he starts going crazy. So he um, engages once again in a bout of self-hypnosis. Um, and um, tricks himself into thinking that he's Liquid Snake. Yeah. Uh, there is a theory that since Revolver Ocelot is the son of the boss in the Sorrow, and the Sorrow has like some telekinetic abilities, that because they transplanted Liquid Snake's arm, that he has this ability. And I think Kojima's like, you think whatever you want, yeah. but 
That was the theory after MGS3, but uh, MGS4 pretty solidly retcons that with the self-hypnosis story. Okay. <laughs> so, that's, so that is why the Patriots believed him um, and didn't catch on to the self-hypnosis theory. Um, so Liquid Ocelot shows up at the um, at the tanker um, and steals the... Oh, um, can that. oh is that on the other side? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, so Liquid Ocelot then steals um, the, the Metal Gear that the um, army is moving um, and destroys the tanker and Solid Snake is presumed dead. So Not only presumed dead, but also implicated in the destruction of the tanker. Yes. Um, which, of course, is a huge environmental disaster. Uh, there's a gigantic oil spill in um, the Hudson River? No, I believe, no, no, no. no the shell is in a, I believe, I'm pretty sure the big shell is in a different place. Where's the her, her no. shell is? No, it was in, um, it was in the, it wasn't in the Hudson River, it was, it was in the Bay. The Hudson Bay. Yeah, it was off the coast, because the thing that hits New York. Yeah. Yes. And it was, it was the tanker that they were containing. That was a little time. Well, there was an oil spill, but uh, um, it was not nearly as, as bad. big. It was, it was not nearly as bad as um, the Patriots implied. Um, so here's some details about Metal Gear Ray. <laughs> you might notice that Metal Gear Ray is not actually nuclear capable. This is because Metal Gear Metal Gear Ray is specifically designed as an anti Metal Gear Metal Gear. <laughs> the purpose of Ray it is um, was developed by the U.S. government uh, to destroy other Metal Gears. Um, it is specifically designed to be um, more agile um, and have uh, greater um, capabilities against um, machines of its size. Um, it is fully amphibious and can operate by itself um, under the water and travel long distances with. Uh, she guns, anti-tank missiles, anti-ship missiles, a water jet cutter that can cut through solid metal, and uh, cluster missiles. So, yes, no nuclear armament, but specifically designed to stop metal gears. And that the lack of because of the lack of any nuclear capabilities, Metal Gear Ray is not actually a Metal Gear. Yes. Um, the name Metal Gear Ray um, is just specifically to uh, when when data got out, it was to um, scare other nations to what the, the U.S. was capable of. So, um, is, 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 yes, it, it, it certainly is. Um, they throw about four plot twists at you within the course of 30 minutes. <laughs> and it all has to do with this thing. And they all have to do with this, the S3 system. So, what it actually is, question for societal sanity, is a social engineering protocol. And um, how it works is that they wanted to see if they could make another solid snake. They wanted to see if this... No, that was that was on what Ocelot thought it was. So what it actually is, it's a system from, it's a system by the Patriots designed for controlling the general population of the world um, to act a certain, to work their economy in a certain way, to consume their media in a certain way, it was just, it was a social engineering protocol to get people to do stuff like that. So as a res so in order to test this, they created a, re a recreation of the Shadow Moses incident in a facility that was supposed to be cleaning up and the oil spill from the tanker. Yes, um, but what it actually was is um, it was a, um, a construction platform to build Arsenal Gear, which would house... We have the big show ones in the next. Okay, okay, all right. Um, they tested their um, their ability to make sure that people actually behaved a certain way in this specific instance by trying to get right in a solid state. And because, in this case, it proved to be a resounding success, um, the Patriots just moved it on to general control. Yes. Have you guys mentioned how Ryan is involved? Uh, well, yes, he is the test subject for this. Um, so the Patriots took Ryan, who was one of their um, one, one of their Solidus' child soldiers. Yes, one of Solidus' child soldiers who then went through rigorous VR training uh, in order to be a um, a soldier, and then they sent him uh, to Big Shell um, in, in a recreation of the Shadow Moses incident um, with. 
Uh, there was a rogue group called the Sons of Liberty um, who had taken control of the platform, and he had to go in and um, stop what he thought was a nuclear launch. But actually, um, he began to uncover that Big Shell was a uh, creation for something called Arsenal Gear, housing for one of the Patriots' AI systems, GW. Yeah, specifically the one that controlled the. I believe that was the one that controlled the military. Mm -hmm. That's that's JD. Right. What was GW? Then? I think I think GW was the S three. It, it might have been. Yes, to control the media. Wasn't JD the overall one? Yeah, GW was the internet one. Yeah. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 2 has a lot on its mind about the internet being used to socially engineer people, and it likes it like crazy throw, things like rig elections. Yeah, and it likes to throw all that on you in about 20 minutes <laughs> out of a 14-hour game. I think yeah, I have seen. I was introduced that cutscene within this. Probably yeah. Probably no, it's it's wild. I was actually the other day. I was like reading a paper for. Um, I was switching between reading a paper for class and making this mission, and the paper was talking about using like media to control minds of people, and I like got really messed up. I was like, no, I need to work on my paper, not the Metal Gear mission. <laughs> oh my god, I am working on the paper. Life imitates art. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the um, now, I think we don't give the Sons of Patriots or the Sons of Liberty uh, enough credit um, because the Sons of Liberty, although they were basically just planted by the Patriots, they were their own organization with their own goals. The leader of this organization was Solidus, who, after being forced to resign um, as president, he decided that he was going to take over Arsenal Year and use it to force the Patriots to let him in. Um, the only other really important member of the Sons of Liberty um, is Vamp, who once again is the only surviving member um, of this incident. Um, and he just so happens to be voiced by Phil Lamar, the guy who voices uh, the Green Lantern in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Cool. Um, but so um, the very particular thing about Vamp um, as we move forward is that he is the, um, the first soldier to um, receive high, high, high doses of nanomachines. While there were several other soldiers in the past, I believe Raiden was. Um, I, I'm, I'm don't match on that. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure that Raiden was, and several other soldiers at the time had low amounts of nanomachines in them. Bam was the first soldier to have high enough amounts of nanomachines that he could actually heal from bullet wounds before the bullet had exited his body. <laughs> And also walk. Well, well, no, along with a bunch of other like fantastic powers. Well, like, well, yeah. There's nothing the supernatural about that. The net and machines make him immortal. Yes. Solid mm -hmm. blew his freaking brains out. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of minor memory loss. So um so Ryan is successful um, in uh, shutting down the Big Shell incident. Uh, he does destroy Arsenal Gear, and with it, um, a core pillar of the Patriots AI. Um, he also defeats um, Solidus Snake on top of the Capitol building. Um, it was, it would have been, no, because it was in New York City. The National Church, some important US building. Okay. There's a lot of symbolism. There's an American flag waving in the background and all this stuff. Um, and so he does defeat Solidus Snake. Snake, um, who uh, again captured him as a child soldier and was like a father figure to him. I don't really messed up kind of way. Yeah. Um, yes. Can you mention Otacon and his father's falling out, for lack of a better term? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the deal with what happened, and we brought up before that um, Huey got his confidence later. Um, so Otacon got, well, um, Huey ended up remarrying after yes. he killed, after um, killed Dr. Strange. Yes, he did. This wife was apparently very attractive to Huey's son, Otacon. Um, and this is his stepmother. Yeah, yeah. He's a stepmother, so it's okay. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but actually, no, actually, it's not okay, because he, he's like, Otacon's like emotionally tortured by this yes. for his whole life. Yes. Yeah, so um, Otacon sleeps with the stepmom, and um, Huey both 
finding out about this, um, kills himself. Uh, and attempts there, um, Huey and his new wife have a daughter, and Huey attempts to kill himself and his daughter uh, by drowning. Right. Uh, but his daughter does escape. Yes. Also, the daughter dies in MGS2. Yeah, yes, yes, she does die later. Um, another important character from um, MGS2 is um, Olga Garukovich, um, who. Important. Yeah, um, basically, she is. Her daughter is more important. Her daughter is significantly more important. She does have a daughter that, similar um, to, uh, gives birth to a child on the battlefield, just like the boss, and that child is taken from her by the Patriots. Um, this um, son, who we will get into in a moment. We didn't mention Naomi at all either. Yeah, we, we cut a lot of things from Naomi for time restraints, and if we have time at the end, we can get into that. Mm -hmm. um, but even though one of the main pillars of the, of the Patriot uh, propaganda machine was destroyed, um, the remainder, the remaining three AI are still around. Um, oh, what this creates is a war economy. Um, the AI JD uh, supplies nanomachines to private military contractors throughout the world, as well as all the militaries of the world. And um, it's under the guise of uh, basically performance enhancement. Um, it create, it allows to move more quickly, react more quickly, be stronger. Uh, work um, together better by these nanomachines, uh, communicate digitally with each other. Yep, they can communicate without any sort of apparatus. Um, in addition, they can uh, create guns that are locked so that only their owner can fire them. Um, and ultimately, this sounds like this sounds like a really cool like thing, but of course, it's really dangerous. Um, and instead of a nuclear arms race, the world drops off into a private military race, where um, the that either owns uh, either by funds or uh, by um, direct uh, loyalty, uh, the most powerful private military will be the most powerful nation. In general, um, most of the time, wars end up being fought for the purpose of spurring the economy along, um, rather than for any sort of political gain. Uh, Isn't that thing like all the soldiers on the left, all the soldiers? Yeah, these are frog soldiers. Um, these are uh, ocelots. Yeah. Yes, liquid ocelots, uh, private unit. Um, Great. So this is, um, we've moved into Mongers Log 4 now, um, and this is a um, gecko, which is a sort of tank, really, more than a Metal Gear. Whereas Metal Gears are, um, up to this point, were very few um, and far in between, with each one being a huge major advancement, geckos went into mass production. Um, there are hundreds, um, maybe. Oh, there's more than hundreds. Yeah, maybe like thousands. There's like hundreds in particular battles. It's, yeah. There's tons. Like hugely mass produced. Um, there's a base model, which um, has a couple of um, abilities to it, but they're also very highly customizable. Um, up to the most interesting um, being that you can arm them with a uh, nuclear demolition charge and have them uh, run behind enemy lines and self-destruct. So Metal Gear Solid 4 is interesting in that it's a lot more of a linear narrative than the um, than the other game, at least Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, but it also follows two separate narratives. The first being that of Old Snake. Uh, Solid Snake, even though he's only about 43 years old, has discovered that he's aged to, the, to about someone who's well in their 70s. Um, he believe, he's afraid that this might have to do with the fox guy that's still inside him. Um, so he goes, so he sets out to find an answer. Ultimately, he finds Naomi Hunter, the person who injected him with the fox guy in the first place, and discovers two things, kind of good news and kind of bad news. Actually, kind of good news. <laughs> um, the kind of good news is that the aging isn't caused by the fox guy. The aging is, in fact, perfectly natural because, as a clone, he just ages faster than normal people. Um, but, but they don't actually give a. The game like dodges giving a hard time on 
how long Snake has left to live because of this aging. But because of the really, really bad news, which was on top of having a new strain of fox dye injected into him for some mysterious reason, <laughs> the old strain is starting to deteriorate, meaning the enzyme that detects a person's individual uh, DNA is starting to uh, wear away. And in a couple of months, um, it's predict it was predicted that the enzyme would be completely gone, causing it to go airborne and kill anyone that, that contracted it. So the important thing about this is that Solid Snake, who has spent their life either trading for or being in the process of uh, destroying uh, and um, defeating uh, weapons of mass destruction, is slowly becoming a biological weapon of mass destruction himself. So the whole game ultimately is a race against the clock, against his own, his own uh, biological countdown. And another important thing is that in Metal Gear Solid 4, the start screen, as soon as you boot up the game where you have you know, your new game continue options, um, in the background, swirling around the scene, is a um, snake in a cemetery with a gun. And um, as the scene begins to come to a close, you see snake place the gun in his mouth, and the camera pans up. This is that was that was not the um, title screen. That was the final scene. No, that's the title screen. No, that's the title scene in the game. Really? Yeah. Yes. If you watch the whole title sequence, that's what happens. Very, so it very obviously um, sort of hints at the fact that um, Snake has to finish his mission because he's the only one capable um, of stopping um, Liquid Ocelot, whose plan we'll get into in a moment. Um, and he has to do this before the fox eye within him breaks down and he becomes a weapon of mass attraction. And he will eventually have to off himself by his own hand. <laughs> so Ocelot's plan is pretty simple here. Um, he wants to take control of JD that's pre that's created a nanomachine to place them inside all the soldiers, and he wants to use them to have the only military in the world. Um, all, so, as you can see, at one point he does this and illustrates his, uh, his control with finger guns. Um, so, what's, yes, he does eventually take control of JD. Um, and he uses this control to then stop the nanomachines of uh, every soldier around the world. They're no longer able to fire their own weapons. Their own um, physical and mental capabilities suddenly stop all at once. Uh, one of the things that the nanomachines do that we didn't mention is it actually um, represses PTSD, um, as it will um, actually stop the chemicals in your brain um, from uh, from creating things such as um, like depression or um, like violent flashbacks or whatnot. So soldiers no longer have to live with the weight of what they've done. Um, this all comes flooding back all at once as soon as the nanomachines are shut down, um, the fact that they can you know, no longer shoot their weapons, and um, all of their machines no longer function as well. So as Ocelot shuts down um, all of these things one at a time, he orchestrates with finger guns and causes helicopters to drop out of the sky and and then Ocelot ends up using Ocelot ends up using this control over his over the world's military to create uh, his own because at this point he's still believes he's liquid so he's operating under Liquid's ideas um, and Liquid wanted to continue Big Boss's ideals so he created a massive a, was it just a uh, it was it just a carrier ship or was it a helicarrier? It was it was um, like it had a runway on it. Yeah, um, called Outer Haven. Um, Is there and there's no issue about it. Sounds like the other. Yeah. Um, and Snake, uh, to great at great cost to himself, ends up stopping uh, Ocelot in the best fist fight <laughs> in video games. I will fight you on that. Yes, um, I, I agree. Four games in one. Yeah, it, yeah it, it runs over. Um, so over the course of the fist fight, as you're fighting um, Ocelot on top of Outer Haven, it actually, um, the health bars of you and him, actually the UI changes to that of Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, and 4 as the fight progresses. And the more you beat him up, the less liquid he becomes and the more Ocelot he becomes. You literally beat the hypnosis out of him. Um, 
So then um, Snake succeeds in uh, uploading a virus uh, made by um, one of the most brilliant computer hackers of all time, Sunny, who was Obi Luigi by the Patriots, and an eight-year-old girl, I believe. Yes, and also an eight-year-old girl who can't make eggs. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she creates uh, this computer virus that will shut down the entirety of the Patriots called Fox Alive. Um, <laughs> Snake successfully uploads this into JD after defeating um, Ocelot. Yeah, um, it was before defeating Liquid Ocelot. He, he uploads it into that, um, and it goes into not just um, Outer Haven's computer, but it goes into JD, it goes into all of the um, remainder, Patriots. remainder of Patriots AI and shuts them down completely. So the world is now free of the Patriots. <laughs> Ocelot is dead, and now all that we're left with is Snake, who is actually going to die. Um, so this is kind of a weird part, and there isn't really like a good way to transition into this. But the uh, so Snake, so Snake goes to the cemetery, to the grave of um, both Big Boss and the Boss, the original uh, mother of espionage. Um, he goes to Arlington, I believe, which is where they are buried, um, and he prepares to uh, commit suicide. To I stop. Don't believe it's Arlington. Is it not Arlington? No, uh, Arlington is. Uh, don't have stones, and it's not like I think it's. I think it's like a specific area. Of, it is a specific. Um, like it's not our Arlington. It's like okay. And yeah, he prepares to commit suicide, where he is stopped by Big Boss. Um, Big Boss, who, in a very, very, very long cutscene that you have to wait until after the credits to see, um, explains to Snake the um, the new strain of Fox Die that was mysteriously injected into him is actually consuming the old strain of Fox Die, so he's not actually becoming a bioweapon anymore. That um, Big Boss orchestrated this new uh, Fox Die injection. That's because, the information that I because that box die ended up being the strain that killed him. Yes. Um, I, no, um, no, it wasn't that. It was the it was the Patriots that did it because it was um, what was Drevin um, injected it into him, and Drevin was oh, working for right. the Patriots. Yes. That's how he managed to get the okay. Yes. That's how he managed to scrub the IDs off the guns. Yes. Yes. Um, so the Patriots planted that new strain of box die in Snake with the intent of Boss Ocelot and all the remaining loose ends. And the Patriots. I think it was just Eva. Uh, it, um, Eva also dies. Yeah, Eva does. Eva does die. Um, no, she, she dies from the I think those side. three were the only targets. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, those were the only three survivors of the. But Zero is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zero is. He's there. He's, he's basically he's like a shore. Yes. He, yeah. Um, so, Big Boss and Solid Snake um, together. Pull the life support from zero, and um, Big Boss slowly succumbs to Fox Die. Um, one of the things that it, I hyperlinked in the last 10 minutes of the scene. Uh, this that's is a big bump here. And as we have 15 minutes left, I think we can get away with it. We have sound, right? Yes. All right. We test it. Yeah, the, the fist fight, I kind of wanted, I kinda, there was so much on Metal Gear Solid 4 that I would love to put on here, but also, like, in order to get one thing on Metal Gear Solid 4, it's like 12 minutes, so. Yeah. Alright. Uh, go back to the beginning. That's Big Boss on the ground and Old Snake Oh. 
you. You have been given freedom. Freedom to be outside. You are nobody's tool now. No one's toy. You are no longer a prison of fate. So uh, let's hope we don't get um, content ID on that. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it had me. It lost me. It had me again. Yeah. Okay, so long. You know, and that at the end is the thesis of Metal Gear. That if you keep following, if you if you base your life around following someone else's ideals and living someone else's life, you're only going to end up as half a person. And that was what this whole 50-year saga ended up being. You know, say what you will about how much of a mess Metal Gear Solid 4 is plot-wise, I still think it's the best send-off that Metal Gear Solid could have possibly had. So with that, um, we're going to conclude the mission, conclude the stream, and uh, hopefully words of Big Boss will ring true. And uh, as, you, as you go forth for your exams, uh, live your own life. <laughs> and uh, port your own path to the world. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Bye.